Hey, if you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize the software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about Scrivener, specifically the outliner view. And by talk, I mean I talk and you leave comments down below. Ask me questions or tell me about your favorite Scrivener features. So the outliner feature, I've kind of waxed poetic about this before, about how much I love the outliner. And so we're just going to dive right into it. The outliner is part of a trio of the group views. I'm making your quotes with my hands that you can't see, whatever. Um, and so what does that mean? All right. So up here we have our three group views and these are um, at their best when you are using them to view groups. So folders rather than just individual documents. The one over here, this is the Scrivening's view. And this one is good for taking a look at everything in this folder and looking at how it kind of lines up together. This is how it will all look. Each one is separated by these dots, so you can kind of track what your manuscript is going to look like. And then over here is the corkboard view. And this is like if you were like me back in the day using three by five cards to write your stuff on and lining them up on the table or the floor or like responsible people, I guess, used cork boards, but ain't nobody got time for that. I would just throw them on the floor. So this is kind of the digital version of that, which is pretty handy. And I feel like the scrivenings and the corkboard view get so much attention and praise, but really it's the outliner for me, the outliner that does the big, big lifting of Scrivener and the reason why I love it so much. I really want to start talking about metadata because I'm a big nerd, but in order to talk about metadata, I've got to talk about the outliner first because the outliner is what allows that metadata to really be functional and really shine. So let's talk about the outliner. So over here is basically the default. I've tweaked it a little bit. Um, in the default, these backgrounds won't be here, but I like them. It helps me to visually differentiate just like kind of over here. So over here, the same as over here, you're going to go up to the view and this says use plot point color in. yours will probably say use label color in, but I changed my labels to say plot point because that's how I arrange my labels and over here, oops, over here. So the outliner rows. So if we turn it off, they go away and then we turn it back. On. Boom, and there we go. So I can see all of my hooks exactly, all of my pinches exactly, and so so on and so forth. These are the default columns that you're gonna get when you open up your brand spanking new baby outliner view. Uh, except your plot point, yours, this will say labels. Like I said, I changed mine to say plot points because look, that's how I arrange mine. So I changed it just to be a little more clear. So the first one will say labels. And the second one will say status. So you could just look real fast and say, okay, that one's to do. I still need to do that. And then you can start there. And if it says done, great, we're done. I'm skipping it. Section types, you can change them over here if you want to. It's just an extra place to do it. Or just to, to look and make sure that, oh, you know, my folders are chapter headings and my scenes are all designated as scenes. And if they're not, it's just a real quick click and you can change it. The total target here and total progress, you can assign word count targets to your documents and that will show up here to show you, okay, I wanted to get 100 words in here and I only have 24 or 30 or something like that. So I need to work more here and I really need to work on this one and then the ones that are all the way over, uh, you're, you're all set. You've at least written in that word count. And then last but definitely not least, keywords yay we love keywords we're talking about keywords in a minute okay i actually probably won't talk about keywords here that much that will be more in the metadata video which i'm going to publish at the same time as this one so that you've got both of them to kind of you know because they they're very synth like they synthesize they were they go together but i don't want to make like a 40 minute long video so i'm going to split it up into two hopefully the one each be 20 minutes long that would be bonkers anyway if you want to add a column you click on this little arrow right here and these will pop up. They're mostly pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to turn on the keywords as color chips just to show you what the difference is between keywords on their own and keywords as color chips. 
You can have on display the created or modified date, what your current word count is, or your character count if you are typing up something that has character limits instead of word count limits. This is handy for that. Total word count and total character count, target, target type, total target, total progress, regular progress. So you might be noticing in a couple of places we've got stuff like word count versus total word count or target versus total target. And you know what, what the heck does that mean? So let's pull up our targets, progress, total target, and total progress. And I'm just gonna click off boop, 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 boop. the rest of you. I'll leave this on. Okay, click off the rest. All right, so here's our total target, total progress, regular target, regular progress. What does it mean? I'm gonna go to split screen because that's a good way to show you what's going on here. I wanna make sure that this side is selected. So this is blue, this is my selected side. And then I'm gonna come over here to scene. And you can see down here, I've got this little bar. And if I click on it, I get this box. And in one that has not had anything already set, It'll be this little bullseye icon. So you can click on it and target for this document. Let's say it's 200 words. Minimum target is 200 and we'll allow it to overrun by 50. I don't want it to be too long. So overrun by 50 and you can check these boxes if you want. You can show your overrun in here or wherever else you're tracking it and the allowance and progress bar. If you want to, I'm going to choose to leave them just to simplify things. And then you can show target notifications, which a little thing will pop up when you reach your target and it'll go, hooray, you met your target. But I'm gonna leave that off for now. So we'll hit okay. And I hope you noticed over here, let's drag that over. So that is scene B, all right, scene B. And I just set the total target and the regular target for, for these, they're both the same, to 200 plus 50, if, if that's what we're into. The target, the, both the total and the regular target for documents is displayed in here and they are the same. But if you look up here in the folder that they are nested under, books, the total target 450, which is 200 plus 150 plus 100 equals 450. But the target, the regular target is zero because folders do not get individual targets because the folder itself holds no text. You can't put text in there. You can only put text in these text documents. The target for the folder is zero, but the total target that it contains counts up all of these things, if that makes sense. And so that's the difference between our totals and our regulars. The regulars are relevant to these guys down here, but not to anything that is a group, anything that holds stuff in it that is a folder that doesn't have its own text this is always gonna be zero, but its total target will add up everything that is nested inside it. If I were to change scene one to 25 words, this would pop up to 475, but this would still be zero, if all of that makes sense. Okay, how to add columns. And I told you about this, but then all the way down here at the bottom, custom columns, what does that mean? Let's click on that, okay. So we are delving into the custom metadata right now, which naughty naughty. Um, that's for a different video, the next video, as a matter of fact, and I think I'm going to kind of pop over to that. The, this is super fun and awesome. I don't want to steal my metadata videos thunder, but just know that if you want to, if you are in this outliner view and you're in here and you go, what's custom columns, that's part of the metadata, the custom metadata that we will talk about in our next video. That's it, I am all done. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you learned something new about the Outliner View. If you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Wash your hands, Black Lives Matter. Have a nice day.